Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's mentoring hour. My name is Smita Narona, and I'm one of the faculty here at, uh, at the Bible College. So before we begin, uh, I'll just open us in prayer, and then we'll go into uh, today's topic and discussion. Father, we uh, just thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you. Lord, for bringing us together as uh, students and faculty to hear from your word, to be able to uh, engage with one another, uh, to be able to share and build each other up, Lord. Uh, we welcome you, Lord, to lead this time uh, that we are together. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would uh, bless our time, that you would edify us, that you would uh, you would enable us, Lord, to grow in you. Uh, and Lord, through all of this learning, Lord, that we would become more like you. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about anger management. Um, I'll share a little bit on the topic and then we'll open it up for questions either on what I've shared or um, on anything else that you would like to ask uh, the faculty and uh, we'll try and uh, give you the answers as best we can. I'll just share my presentation, Sonny. Okay, so um, scripture talks a lot about anger management, uh, specifically about anger and uh, addresses when it's right, when it's wrong, uh, how we are to uh, properly express anger. So we look a little bit at that, uh, but before we go into that, uh, let me just cover what all we look at. So we look at what is anger? Uh, is anger forbidden by God? Godly anger versus human anger? And then how to deal with anger, which is what anger management is. How do we deal with our anger? So what is anger? Uh, if we look at the Old Testament, there's actually a lot of words that are used to describe anger. And uh, these words actually uh, also describe the process of becoming angry, uh, not only the actual emotion we feel. Uh, so anger usually begins with an outside event. There's something that happens outside of us uh, that then affects us on the inside. Um, so it's something that almost is like a spark on the outside. And then within us, there's something that uh, burns or uh, there's a fierce or intense feeling that rises up within us. Uh, so there's a feeling inside, which is a response to what has happened on the outside. Uh, and then from here, what happens on the inside then pours out in a reaction that comes outside. Uh, so it uh, comes out in the form of wrath, it comes out in the form of fury uh, towards uh, things or people around us. Uh, just to express what is going on inside of us. And then uh, sometimes we may not be the kinds of people who express anger outwardly. Uh, for people like that, um, uh, that continues to remain, that anger continues to remain within us uh, and uh, continues to be within our hearts in the form of a grudge or bitterness uh, or resentment uh, because of what has happened. Uh, so this is what anger is. It's not only the emotion that we feel inside, it's everything from what has happened on the outside. What is it that uh, bothers us? What is it that triggers us uh, to respond in anger? And then it is what happens within us, how we respond, uh, and then what we continue to feel inside once uh, we've had that experience. So uh, let's look at, is anger forbidden by God? Uh, in Matthew 5, 21 to 22, we just look at the beginning of 
uh, 22. Uh, Jesus said, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Uh, so here it uh, seems like Jesus is equating anger with murder and saying uh, both are uh, both are sin, so you can't get angry. Uh, but if we continue to read on in this passage, uh, Jesus talks about how uh, this kind of anger is displayed. And uh, two ways in which he uh, talks about it is one uh, that results in insults that are uh, cast upon the person we are angry at. And uh, if we look at James 3, 9 to 10, uh, it talks about how can you curse someone who's made in the image of God and also use the same mouth to bless God. So uh, the same thing that we are not to uh, place curses or insults upon people who are made in the image of God. Uh, so when anger comes out in that way, or uh, when anger uh, uh, is also because of pride or bitterness or unforgiveness, if that remains in our hearts after we've uh, become angry for one reason or another, uh, then those two cases are evidence of uh, an anger that is not godly. And so this is the kind of anger that Jesus is saying is subject to judgment. Uh, when we look at Ephesians 4.26, it says, Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Uh, be angry and yet do not sin. Both of these are uh, actually said in... Uh, an imperative tone, so it's like a command. So you're, you're told to be angry, which means uh, the writer uh, knows that we are going to be angry and we will be angry in certain circumstances. Uh, but the command then is do not sin. So uh, the teaching in scripture is not that we should never be angry. It is that we should be angry uh, for the right reasons and we should express our anger in the right way. So we look at what is the difference between godly anger and human anger. And uh, our goal is to uh, then uh, pursue an anger that is righteous, which is uh, the godly anger. Uh, James 1, 19 to 20 says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Uh, so we see here um, a distinction that is made. Uh, there's slow to become angry versus human anger. Uh, and throughout the Old Testament, God is described as someone who is slow to anger. Uh, the first time this is uh, said of God is in Exodus 34, 6 to 7, where, uh, where God himself reveals himself as a God who is slow to anger. So this is when he... Uh, he passes before Moses, and it's the second time the, uh, the commandments and uh, the covenant is being established on the top of the mountain. So this is after uh, Moses has gone down the first time, seen the people sacrificing to uh, the idol, and then come back the second time to receive uh, the Ten Commandments and receive uh, the law from God. And so uh, Exodus 34, 67, where God reveals himself, he says, Yahweh, Yahweh, the God of compassion and mercy, I'm slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin, but I do not excuse the guilty. So we see here uh, a few important words that uh, I use. Uh, he's a God of compassion, a God of mercy, uh, filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. And so these are some key uh, words for us to take away uh, to understand how do we respond when we are angry. Uh, think about having compassion and mercy, uh, to be people who love steadfastly, love the person, uh, even in the midst of that situation that has made us angry. Uh, and to be faithful, uh, another way to understand this word is uh, truth. So some translations will use the word truth. And so uh, to also 
firmly uh, hold on to the truth uh, as it continues in this passage. It says, I lavish unpaid up to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin, but I do not excuse the guilty, uh, which means we hold on to truth. We do not, uh, we do not um, run away from sin or we do not uh, pretend as if sin has not happened. We call out sin. Uh, so we hold on to that truth, but we also forgive at the same time. Uh, so this is the other side of it, human anger. Uh, James 4, 1 to 3 says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desire, the desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you will spend what you get on your pleasures. Uh, so the difference here is the desires that battle within us that come from wrong motives. Um, so uh, I've just mentioned some major desires and some things that usually uh, provoke anger within us. So uh, security, we all have a desire for a sense of security, whether it is uh, physical, emotional, uh, whatever security we are looking for, we all have that need. Uh, we have a need for respect, we have a need for love. Uh, and this uh, is also for others, right? When we see someone we love being disrespected or being put in danger or uh, being uh, hurt in some way, then anger is usually our response to that. Um, another desire is for a deeper sense of purpose or meaning. Um, and other desire is for us to have a, where we have ambitions to use hopes for our own lives or for the lives of others that we love. Now, uh, when uh, any of these things are attacked is when we usually respond in anger. Uh, but sometimes these desires, which are good, can come from wrong uh, motivations. So when we are seeking um, security from the outside, where we don't have a strong sense of security uh, in God himself, uh, but we, are, we find our security in others, or uh, where we are trying to satisfy eternal longings within us with material or temporary things or people, um, or where our ambitions, dreams, and hopes are for our own glory rather than for the glory of God. So when these motivations are the things that are driving these desires, then when we are in some way offended, when someone comes against any of these things, it's very easy for us to respond in anger. Uh, so we'll just quickly cover how we deal with anger, and then we'll move to our questions. Um, so the first way is to be fully aligned to God. Uh, if we continue in that passage in uh, James uh, chapter 4, uh, it talks about being uh, a friend of the world versus being a friend of God and says you can't be both. Uh, you have to be, you have to choose one. And so for us to choose to be fully aligned to God, uh, for our security, our sense of purpose, our uh, ambitions and desires, all of those things to come uh, under the authority of God, for us to be defined by God uh, is very important. The second thing is for us to surrender our needs and desires to God. So Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it will be given to you. Uh, so for us to be able to entrust all of these desires to God and uh, and believe that he will satisfy it uh, at the right time and in the way that is best for us. Uh, the third is to address root issues. And this is very important where we are seeing uh, repeated issues of anger, where we're seeing that we respond very quickly in anger uh, in certain situations or when something uh, specific happens. Uh, so for us to recognize that there may be a root issue that needs to be dealt with. Uh, and here is where we examine our motives. Uh, what is it that is uh, being, being offended uh, that is causing this anger? And once we recognize the motives that are behind it, uh, for us to come to God in repentance and to resist uh, Satan, as uh, James 4, 6 to 10 talks about. And then uh, if 
we recognize that our motivations are right uh, and these needs as i said before are good needs uh, good desires uh, so we should then look at how do we meet this need in a way that is uh, healthy so the first thing is to acknowledge and speak the truth so to uh, address with the person involved uh, what has happened uh, where they have wronged you or where you have wronged them usually uh, there are two sides to the story right we have done something uh, wrong also we usually have a part to play in it so for us to both be able to confess our own mistakes and also uh, address with the person what they have done wrong what has caused that anger within you uh, the second is to forgive uh, the third is to be compassionate uh, like we read about god god is compassionate and merciful uh, so for us to have that same kind of nature of compassion uh, for the person who has hurt us to recognize the hurt that they have that is causing them to hurt us um, the fourth one is to deal with things quickly not to let them uh, stay within our hearts and not to let them uh, fester within us and cause bitterness or continue to uh, impact the way we relate with that person or relate with others around us. And the last is to let God avenge you. So sometimes we may not uh, be able to fully resolve the issue. We may not be able to be fully reconciled to the person, uh, either because they are unwilling to be reconciled or uh, for some other issue, or that they've continued to hurt us and we feel that uh, it is better to then draw a boundary and uh, protect ourselves in that situation. In these cases where there is no uh, sign of repentance or on the other person's side or where uh, there is no desire for reconciliation. Uh, we do not try to avenge ourselves. Rather, we leave it to God to avenge us and uh, trust him uh, to deal with that person uh, and continue to pray for that person, continue to love that person uh, as best we can. Uh, so with that, we will close uh, our discussion on anger. Um, if there are any questions, um, please feel free to share your questions. You can post in the chat or unmute and ask your questions. Uh, and you can ask based on what I've shared about or based on anger itself or on anything else. Uh, yes, Sister Gertrude, uh, please go ahead and ask your question. You can unmute enough. Okay, uh, sorry, you're unable to unmute, sister. Uh, if you're not able to unmute, maybe, okay. Um, we'll just check the settings on our side. Uh, would you be able to post it in the chat until we're able to resolve that? Uh, Anyone else has questions or is going to be the same people to post it in chat in the chat? Okay, so we have two questions that have come in. Uh, 
I'll just read Danny's question first. Uh, it says, ma'am, how, how do we recover our own self after anger so that we don't show our anger to anyone else? Um, I'll, I'll answer your question a bit, and then also leave it open to um, faculty if anyone else would like to add. Um, I think uh, the first thing, uh, when if we are convicted that we have responded in anger in a way that uh, has caused hurt or is sinful in some way, the first thing is uh, to repent uh, before God and uh, to ask the goodness of the person who has, uh, who we have hurt. Uh, so that is the first thing. Uh, the second is to seek reconciliation uh, with the person. So if they have also done something wrong, to bring that up with them, uh, to be able to share uh, what they did that has hurt you or what you felt was wrong that they did, and uh, to try and uh, be able to be reconciled with them after that. Um, and uh, to deal with things within our heart. Uh, so the two things we talked about was, is there a wrong motivation in our own heart that uh, sparked that anger? So was there something uh, within us that is not right? Uh, are we looking for uh, something from that person that we should not be expecting from them, but rather to something that uh, we should be satisfied in God? Um, so if there is something like that to be able to correct that within ourselves, so whether that to God. But if uh, it is a right desire and there is right motivation, uh, then to be able to look at how do we meet that need with that person or outside of that person as well. Um, so yeah. Are the ways in which we can address it and to be able to address our heart issues, right? So that we don't continue to hold a grudge or unforgiveness, uh, but to be able to uh, surrender that to God. And I think the first step to healing is forgiveness. Once we are able to forgive that person, then to keep surrendering that to God, I hurt the God and allow God to heal us. Do anyone else from our faculty like to add to that? Uh, thank you, Smitha, for sharing. I just wanted to, uh, like you've already shared all the points, but uh, I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, taking some time off to reflect uh, is uh, so helpful to really think about, you know, why why we expressed um, uh, anger in a certain way or why we're feeling uh, angry and then uh, to, to see you know, what information we have mm -hmm. uh, and uh, whether reconciliation is possible or just to look ahead. So reflection is my point. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll go into the next question. Daniel was, uh, okay, Daniel has uh, the second question. Can you give some practical tips? Um, is there anyone who would like to add to that? Any practical uh, steps? Any uh, anyone from the faculty? Uh, Daniel, um, just to uh, Clarify uh, when you ask about practical tips, are you talking about uh, dealing with what's happening inside of you rather than the relationship, right? Because the relationship, uh, we said uh, you meet with the person, you talk to them. Yeah, so more on what is happening within you. Um, Yeah, so if any faculty member would like to share any other practical tips for how to deal with what's going on inside or what is after you've been added. Um, I will just, okay. Pastor Selena, please go ahead. 
Thank you, Daniel, for your uh, question. Actually, just basically be good to just, uh, you know, uh, see where we have uh, gone wrong, what we have done uh, or said that is wrong. Uh, maybe check our own attitudes and our motives um, and, you know, just uh, ask and just submit it to God, we surrender it to God and ask the Holy Spirit to help us in that area of our weakness. And also it would be good to look at some scripture passages, uh, Bible verses that address this specific weakness that we are having and then just speak it over our lives, declare it over our lives and um, you know, uh, just ask God to help us to deal in that area because if we are not able to deal with our own attitudes and our weaknesses and our wrong motives, then it, uh, you know, we can again have bouts of anger and we can get angry um, and we can uh, get back on the same issues with, this, with different people, not uh, necessarily the same person. So, you know, just submit it to God and ask the Holy Spirit to. Uh, deal with you and work on our own weaknesses and, uh, you know, ensure that, uh, uh, you know, it's covered with prayer and, and we are able to overcome that. And God will help us to overcome it. Yes. Thank you, Smita. Over to you. Yes. Um, uh, Smita, I just wanted to add uh, something to what Pastor Selena shared. So Daniel has mentioned here, uh, how do we recover our own self after anger so that we don't show our anger to anyone else? So um, uh, it's not so much answering the question, but the thought that, uh, uh, like as uh, you shared, right? It is okay to feel angry. It is okay to have righteous anger because there are matters that anger us in the right way. Uh, and it's also okay to, to share that anger, but it's more about um, speaking the truth in love, as you again pointed out. So uh, showing our anger in the right manner is what is important and for which you know some, some things Pastor Selena shared and uh, I had shared earlier to really reflect on the uh, whole situation, analyze it uh, to find solutions uh, would be really helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor can you answer your question? Yes, Pastor. 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 Yes, once again, I can share it a little bit and then if there's anyone who'd like to add, we can open it up. Um, so I think um, the first thing is to kind of uh, go to them uh, and talk about if you're seeing something repeated, because it's, it's an anger issue, then it's something that's happening uh, constantly, right? So to talk about the evidence of that anger, what have they done uh, out of anger that is not uh, not a right way of responding? So if they're the kind of person who usually uh, shouts or screams or uh, expresses the anger verbally, and as a result, there's hurt caused or there's relationships that are broken, then to be able to say, look at this, look at all of these relationships that have been affected, or look at all of these people who have been affected. Uh, if this is a repeated pattern, uh, and there are so many uh, people who have been affected, then maybe there's something that you are doing uh, or something within you that needs to be addressed. So to be able to show them the evidence of uh, what they have done and how that is causing hurt, or how that, uh, what, whatever the results have been of their anger uh, is one thing. And to be able to show them that it is something that's happening repeatedly um, uh, would be one way to do it. Uh, and then to help them through this whole process of dealing with their anger and the same things that we have uh, shared about already uh, would be a good thing. Uh, also, if you are able to identify uh, uh, an issue that you see repeatedly causing anger within the person, to be able to say, is this an issue for you? Is uh, when you hear someone say this, or when you see someone doing this, does it cause anger within you? And why is it that's, uh, that uh, that 
is causing anger. So to be able to help them reflect and uh, see if there is something within them, a, a desire or a motivation that sparks that. It may be from their own experiences of hurt or uh, something else uh, that they are not even able to see it, right? Because uh, they are blinded by their own experience or uh, they have no one else has addressed it with them. So for you to be able to bring it up and help them do that uh, process of reflection uh, would also be uh, another way that you can help them. And always to do it in love and in compassion, uh, not as someone who is standing on the outside judging them, but rather someone who wants to come alongside them and help them through this issue. Um, is there anyone else on um, faculty who would like to add? What? Gertrude, uh, was that? Okay, uh, Pastor Nancy has also shared we could pray for them, definitely. Uh, for their eyes to be opened, right? If they are not able to see that they are causing anger, to pray for them and help them, uh, pray that God would help them see it. Uh, thank you. Sister Gertrude, did that answer your question? Thank you. Uh, so we'll go on to Sister Esther's question. Most of the time in daily life, anger often is due to delayed response or things not aligned the way we want them to be executed. And this is when in anger you say hurtful, negative word of an immediate expression. How do we manage this? Uh, would any of our faculty like to answer this question? Um, yes, Mitha, I'll just add one thought. Um, so, uh, Esther, um, I feel like um, when when things happen, you know, like something happens and then uh, we get angry. We There are two things. One is we can react or we can respond. So to, to practice uh, a response is a good thing. So that way you're, you're actually um, rationally thinking about the whole matter and uh, uh, also, also addressing it in an appropriate way. Uh, that way, saying hurtful things, negative words uh, as an immediate expression, uh, that is something we can avoid if we uh, respond instead of reacting. Thank you. And um, I'd just like to add some thoughts here to Esther's uh, uh, question. Uh, so if there is a delayed uh, response, then, you know, we need to uh, ask that person what is causing the delay? Uh, why are they not responding? So they might have some, you know, uh, there can be some problem in their end. Uh, they're going through something, or you know, or they're not able to handle it, do it. So we need to, uh, you know, get a feedback from them, and then you know, uh, uh, just guide them, uh, motivate them, and uh, you know, uh, help them out uh, so that they can, you know, do things in the uh, in the time limit that you want, and then you can. Also, maybe sometimes, you know, uh, we wouldn't have, uh, uh, you know, uh, communicated to them that this is important. They might have overlooked it. They might have thought, you know, uh, they can do this at a later time. So it's important to see if we have communicated from our end uh, when we want it, how we want it. Um, so the same thing, you know, even the way that uh, we want it to be executed, uh, we need to show that, uh, make sure that we have communicated things right. And if you've not, then maybe we need to explain things, uh, write down things, uh, share it with them. And then, you know, um, uh, that's when we can uh, overcome the anger and we will not say hurtful negative words, but uh, just encourage them. But then, 
in, if they've you know we've taken all those steps and uh, they've not done what uh, we require of them then we need to you know really uh, speak to them and uh, you know check out why they're not doing it and then you know tell them the consequences of it then uh, you know uh, basically if laziness help the person deal with it or you know if the person is um, being slack or whatever you know help them with it if they're not then just you know uh, know that they're not uh, competent enough or capable enough then give it to somebody else so that way we can overcome our anger and not say hurtful and negative words i think i hope that helped uh, esther over to you smita smita i would like to add one thought uh, so uh, Esther, thank you so much for that question. And it's it's very natural uh, because we know in life things may not go our way always. Uh, there are ups and downs. There, there's times when uh, we want things to happen our way, but it does not happen. And the natural tendency is to you know say words or say hurtful things, negative words. But a, a verse that really helped me is uh, Romans 12, 2. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So um, every time we just go back and renew our mind and say, God, I know that this is not something that uh, I expected. And then it goes on to say that then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is and, and his will is good, pleasing and perfect. So we can always say, God, I may not understand why this is happening, but I do know that your, I mean, your will and your will is good, pleasing, and perfect. So, uh, again, this renewing of the mind just keeps happening day after day, and uh, as we keep doing this, we learn to trust God. We learn to uh, go through the seasons that He is taking us through. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Sandy, Pastor Paul. Um, I hope that answered your question is Esther uh, Esther also asked a follow-up question for Pastor Nancy uh, what do you mean in responding uh, sister can you cite an example to differentiate between respond and react sure Sure, uh, Esther. Um, I'll just share uh, in short what I meant. Uh, react would be to be out of control. So we haven't thought through the words that are coming out of our mouth um, uh, and, you know, basically out of control. That would be react. We haven't thought through anything. But respond would be uh, to take action, definitely take action about the matter. Uh, but we've thought through. Our, uh, we have thought through what needs to be spoken, uh, what needs to be done uh, further ahead. So uh, that is responding when we've thought through and we're addressing it in a in a rational uh, manner. So I, I hope that uh, in itself um, is clear. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, Sister, so you can let us know if you have any questions further uh, but yes like uh, like we saw God says he's slow to anger and I think and that's that's what Pastor Nancy is also talking about uh, not um, being quick to respond uh, but waiting thinking through and then uh, then giving a response uh, we'll go on to Sister Jennifer's question: um, How to deal? How to deal with the person who is unsaved and who shows anger, which he can't control? Uh, so I think we addressed some of this, and uh, Sister Jennifer, you responded to that. Uh, the second part of the question is how to overcome abusive and hurtful words without being angry, even if we remain silent for a long time, up to our breaking point of us emotionally. Um, so, sister, we uh, talked a little bit about this, but uh, didn't go into it a lot uh, when I was uh, sharing. So I'll just share a little more, and then uh, faculty also can add in. So uh, when we have been hurt, uh, uh, the first person we should run to is God. He's the one who understands our hurt 
best. Um, he's the one who can heal us. And uh, he's the only one who can really satisfy our heart's desires fully. And so uh, to first go to God with that hurt, to share it with him, to allow him to come into it and uh, to be able to speak to you in those feelings, to be able to uh, bring the healing that you need. Um, now, uh, on the other hand, where this is something that is continuing, uh, you've said we remain silent for a long time. So uh, I'm not sure if you mean that this is something that continues to happen, where someone is continuing to hurt you and you're remaining silent. Um, if that is the case, then uh, you do need to take steps to also protect yourself from being hurt continually. Uh, so if it's a relationship that is abusive, that uh, is uh, continuing to cause hurt to you, uh, then to, uh, if you have tried to be reconciled to that person, right? If you have tried to address it with the person and uh, tell them what they're doing is wrong and uh, they are not willing to, uh, to change or not willing to recognize that they are at fault, then it is important to um, set certain boundaries if it means distancing yourself from that person or um, uh, or even cutting off the relationship, uh, whatever it is that will uh, protect your own heart uh, because we shouldn't be in relationships that are abusive to us. Uh, it's not healthy for us and it's not a relationship that is healthy. Um, and also then to continue to try and uh, seek the help that we need. Uh, so if we have been uh, hurt very badly, then uh, to first take it to God, to seek outside help if we need outside help uh, from friends, from family, from counselors, to be able to reach out to people uh, to help us deal with the hurt that we've experienced. Um, is there anyone else who would like to add to that? Any faculty? Okay. Uh, so, did that answer your question? Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, I think we have one last question on the chat, and then uh, Sam has also asked a question. We'll try and do both. Uh, so, uh, Lucy, Sister Lucy has said, how can we handle people who often fall into anger in conversations without reasons? How can we help such people, which I often noticed in the families when we have get togethers? Um, so, uh, so, Lucy, I think we've talked a little bit about it uh, from the previous questions. Uh, but uh, the main thing is to, I'm not sure when we have get togethers, if that means that you have a strong relationship with them or not. But I think having a relationship with them is key to be able to address these issues uh, so that you are able to be honest with them. Uh, but even if you don't have that level of relationship, to be able to share with them uh, that this is something that you're doing. Often, this is the way we've seen your anger coming out. And to be able to help them uh, reflect on their anger, uh, those are some of the things we talked about earlier. Uh, to be to pray for them is very, very important. Um, to be able to help them see what uh, see that there is an issue and to help uh, to pray that they would be uh, willing to allow you to help, allow God to help them overcome it. Um, would anyone like to add to that? And Sister Lucy, if you had any uh, if this question has been answered by the previous questions, you can let us know. But if we have uh, something that is still unanswered, you can also just post that in the chat.
Uh, just like to share uh, Smita uh, Lucy's uh, question that you know sometimes people just uh, get angry without any particular reason. It's because they're carrying a baggage, or deep down they're wounded, or you know hurt, or uh, going through some emotional uh, you know turmoil and uh, unresolved issues of the past that they are carrying. So, you know, anything and everything can just trigger things off. So even if it's it's in a setting where, uh, you know, people are enjoying themselves, everybody's happy, uh, you know, with their families, with their children, uh, these people can get very hurt because they are not in that place where they can really enjoy um, themselves. And, uh, you know, they can see things uh, in a way that you know, they can feel jealous or angry um, and that bitterness can come out. So I think basically, we need to help such people um, with what is the underlining issues, what they are going through, what they have gone through in the past, unresolved uh, issues, unresolved bitterness, uh, grudges that they're holding, things that have happened in life, uh, which, you know, uh, has happened unexpectedly and they have uh, nothing to do with it. But, you know, all of that hurt and pain. So we need to help them through that hurt and pain, help them to see through things, uh, ask God to help them to, you know, release it and, you know, let go of it and ask for forgiveness. And uh, I think then uh, such people would, uh, you know, uh, be helped and they would, the anger will not trigger off. Yeah, I hope that helps, Lucy. Over to you, Smita. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Salina. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have just three minutes uh, left. Um, we'll just uh, quickly let uh, Sam ask his question and uh, we'll close up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I actually had a young person uh, reach out to me. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, in the context is within the family, right? When the parents are, you know, abusive um, and she's carrying this hurt uh, and it's like inside the household, right? Uh, you can't, and, and you spoke about, you know, we need to seek outside help, but they're in the, in the home. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, you know, the hurt is very real and they're all constantly reminded. Um, this person now, I mean, this person now is in another city studying but she still has to go home and all of that. So how do we respond to, uh, you know, people who are going through hurt within the family, um, especially for young people? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think uh, it's difficult when you're not able to um, Part of the relationship as a relationship continues to be a good uh, So, the other steps that she can continue to do, the other steps is so the uh, first thing I said is to always first turn to God. And uh, we see uh, so many people who are able to uh, come to such a great source of peace uh, when they find God and when they find healing in God that uh, even if there is no repentance from their parents or from the people who've hurt them. Uh, they can still fully forgive uh, their parents and love them. So uh, this is where recognizing God as our father. So be, being able to uh, minister to her in that way uh, to help her uh, come to this place of a relationship with God where she recognizes herself as a child of God first, uh, as uh, Finding her identity in God uh, is very important um, and a big source of healing. It's as she uh, recognizes that that uh, God will begin to heal the hurt within her. Uh, the other thing is because she's in a different city, this also allows some room for distance, which is a really good thing uh, to not constantly be in that place of uh, hurt, uh, but also to receive outside help, like she has reached out to you, uh, Sam. Uh, so she is looking for help, uh, and that is a good thing. So for her to be able to get uh, love uh, from other people, uh, people who are speaking truth into her life, people who are uh, building her up, uh, doing those kinds of things from uh, whether you as a ministry leader or um, outsiders, friends, family, uh, counselors, uh, 
other people are engaged to do that for her is also very important. Um, would anyone else like to add? I don't know, uh, I'm not able to see everyone on the call, sorry, so uh, the dream is on the call if you would like to add it. Jean is not on the call. Uh, any other questions you have? Uh, Professor Ashish, we have something else that you would like to share. Um, um, no, I think I think it's fine. I, I think in, the, in this situation, yeah, the 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 best thing the young person can do is kind of you know stay away from uh, as much as possible from engaging in in situations that you know that would aggravate what's already happened yeah just you know as a young person they're still dependent on the family dependent on the parents so uh, the best thing is you know, stay away from being hurt further yeah thank you smitha please go ahead thank you Thank you, Pastor Sam. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, I think we've come to the end of our time. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you.